This is Jack Jackson. We're going to be talking today about classification of triangles. Now, one of the things that we know from the triangle angle sum theorem is that the angles in the triangle, the measure of the interior angles, must add up to pi radians, or 180 degrees. And so, if we think about it a minute, it's impossible for us to have two uh, obtuse angles, or a right and an obtuse, or, or, or two right angles, because already two angles would add it up to 180 degrees or more, leaving no, nothing left for the other angle. So, every triangle must have at least two acute angles. So we can often look at just the biggest angle and classify them by their, the size of the biggest angle. And so if the biggest angle is acute, then all three angles are acute, and we get an acute triangle. Here's an example of an acute triangle. It's almost a right triangle there, 89.999 degrees for angle I. And we have angle here. So this one is uh, designed in such a way that it always stays an acute triangle. We can also have a right triangle. A right triangle, the largest angle will be a right angle, and of course the other two will be acute angles. This one is a right triangle, so notice we mark a right triangle with a little square down there in the corner. And so this is a right triangle. And this one is, this, this one is constructed in such a way that it always stays a right triangle but we can get every possible right triangle. And an obtuse triangle is a, a triangle in which the largest angle is obtuse, and of course then again the other two angles will be acute. Remember, a right angle is exactly um, measures exactly half of uh, a straight angle, so it has a measure of pi over 2, or in radians, or 90 degrees. Obtuse angle then is larger than that, so it has an angle between, um, well, it's almost uh, a right angle there, just a little bit bigger, all the way down to almost a straight angle there. So something bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees, or bigger than pi over 2, but less than pi. So there's an obtuse angle. Tri obtuse angle there inside a, an obtuse triangle. Now, by the way, just, just as a note on the sketchpad sketches, I've tried to make it where yellow points are points that somehow control, control the uh, drawing. So that, that uh, point right there actually controls the angle, and this controls the length. This controls the length and sort of the rotation, and of course this controls wherever that corner is there. So one way we can classify them is based on the size of the largest interior angle. We can also base them on how many sides are the same length. So a scalene triangle, all of the lengths of the sides, uh, and of course then because of that all the lengths of the angles will be, uh, will be different lengths. So there's some uh, lengths over there. or the scalene triangle, and you can see that this one is constructed in such a way so that the lengths are always all different. So we get three different angle measurements and three different, three different length measurements. Okay, maybe not so obvious there, but uh, maybe we can so make it a little bit more obvious. So we've got three distinct links for the sides. Now an isosceles triangle is a triangle which has two or more congruent sides. So here, notice that these two sides that are marked like this, with these marks, are congruent. If you can tell kind of the way this thing moved, you might get an idea how I constructed this. So notice this kind of goes around here. And so there's an isosceles triangle. Notice that that does include the case where all three are congruent. And it turns out, we can prove this a little bit later on, but it's isosceles if and only if it has a pair of congruent angles as well. 
So if these two sides are congruent, then their opposite angles are also congruent. So it actually later on will prove that if the sides are congruent, then the angles have to be congruent, and vice versa, if the angles are congruent, the sides must be congruent. So that's an isosceles triangle, a triangle with at least one pair of congruent sides. Now a special case in an isosceles triangle is an equilateral triangle in which all three sides are congruent to each other, and it turns out all three angles are congruent. So it's all, not only is it equilateral, it's actual equiangular as well. Which, by the way, how big would the angle be then? If they're all the same, what would the angle be? Well, they all add up to pi, so each one will be pi divided by 3, pi over 3. Or if we do it in degrees, they all add up to what? 180 degrees divided by 3, that's 60 degrees. So each one of these is pi over 3 radians, or 60 degrees. Now, we can summarize that with a table like this, and so notice we have subsets here. So basically we have scalene or isosceles. A special case of isosceles is equilateral. So they can be scalene and acute, or isosceles and acute. It can be right and scalene, or right and isosceles. It can be obtuse and scalene, or obtuse and isosceles. And a special subcase of all of the acute isosceles is the equilateral, which is acute and isosceles, but it's also equilateral. It's a special case. Of course, if it's equilateral, it's automatically both acute and isosceles, so it can't be these two down here. And these are constructed in such a way that they stay, um, they're dynamic, but they stay what it says they are. Acute isosceles, or acute, acute scalene for that one. So that's how we can classify some triangles. Two ways, one by the number of congruent sides, and one based on the size of the largest interior angle.